The crypto space has been blowing up recently. Bitcoin, the king of all cryptocurrencies, will soon surpass its all-time high, which is somewhere around $20,000 per Bitcoin. Bitcoin rising above $19,000 as it closes in on its record high price. But what makes Bitcoin so valuable? Who manages the supply? And who creates the Bitcoins? Let's start at the very beginning. While Bitcoin might be the most successful digital currency the world has ever seen, it is certainly not the first. The idea was first coined by a computer science researcher named David Chom, who published a research paper about the subject in 1983. He also went on to found the first ever digital cash company, DigiCash. How should we structure the network to make it effective so that it can really grow and attract all the kinds of services and users that it will need so that it can predominate? There still was not a strictly digital-only currency until the DigiCash company was started by David Chalm in 1990. It was primarily used as a way to transfer money, using cryptographic algorithms to ensure the security of the funds in transit. The company went bankrupt in 1998. I declare bankruptcy! Since then, there have been numerous other attempts at creating a digital currency. E-Gold, PayPal, Liberty Reserve, all of these projects sought to dominate the online transactionality space, but they were all missing one important key element, a fundamental principle of sound money, decentralized control. This principle was baked into Bitcoin when it was first invented in 2008 by a mysterious researcher named Satoshi Nakamoto, and it is one of the main reasons Bitcoin has seen massive success since its inception. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? The truth is, nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. It could be a single person or a group of people. Satoshi gifted the world the open source code in 2009 after publishing a white paper back in 2008. There are a few potentials, however, including many of the very early adopters of the cryptocurrency after it was invented. These individuals were very active on forums and even contributed to the project. What makes Bitcoin different from previous digital currencies? I touched on this a bit previously, but a huge draw to Bitcoin is its decentralized nature, meaning that no central organization controls the supply of Bitcoins. To understand what I mean, you have to understand how Bitcoin itself works. All Bitcoin transactions are stored on a shared public ledger called the blockchain. The blockchain is made up of, you guessed it, blocks. Duh! Brilliant. Brilliant! Duh! Each block contains about 3,500 transactions, exactly one megabyte of data. All transactions in a block are verified using cryptographic mechanisms, and once a block is added to the blockchain, it lives there forever. The block can never be edited, otherwise the validity of the entire blockchain comes crashing down. This process is verified by miners, who have downloaded the entire blockchain and verified transactions. If one node were to attempt to edit a block in the chain, the rest of the miners would invalidate that change. Anyone can run a Bitcoin node and validate transactions. Therefore, the decentralized nature of Bitcoin is preserved. The only way a person could theoretically change the blockchain is if they were to execute a 51% attack, which means that they would need to obtain access to 51% of all nodes in existence and validate that the erroneous change was actually correct. The beauty of our decentralized internet is that no one controls it. But if 51% were controlled by one entity, like say, Lori and Yao, they could rewrite the rules for everyone. They can delete all of our users, all of our developer apps, crash our coin. This would be the end of Pied Piper. While possible in theory, this is impossible in practice due to the fact that Bitcoin is a global effort. The decentralized nature of Bitcoin means that it can prevent double spending, that is, the falsifying of transactions. Bitcoin was the first digital currency to enable this behavior, and it is one of the main reasons why Bitcoin has achieved the success it has. Is Bitcoin good currency? There are generally six characteristics that make up a good currency. They are durability, portability, divisibility, uniformity, limited supply, and acceptability. Let's see how Bitcoin stacks up in each of these categories. Durability. A currency is durable if it is long lasting. A cow, for example, is not very durable because it can easily get sick and die. Paper money is more durable, but can easily become worn out or torn. Precious metals are probably the most durable form of money. Bitcoin falls somewhere in the middle on this one. 
It is durable in the sense that it never really wears out, but it is reliant on the blockchain continuing to run effectively. If a widespread shutdown of the internet were to occur, for instance, the value of Bitcoin would greatly diminish. Portability Portability describes the currency's ability to be easily transported. Paper money is highly portable as it can fit in your pocket. Precious metals are less portable as they are heavier. Bitcoin is fairly portable, but the technology has a long way to go. Bitcoin ATMs and wallet apps have made the portability of the currency better in recent years, but there is still a long way to go until there is mass adoption. Once that is achieved, Bitcoin will be highly portable. Divisibility A currency is divisible if it can be divided into smaller denominations. Paper money is divisible because, for example, a $10 bill can be divided into a $5 bill in five ones. Precious metals are less divisible, as it requires special tools in order to do it. Bitcoin is extremely divisible. One Bitcoin is made up of 100 million smaller increments called Satoshis. Therefore, you don't need to buy a full Bitcoin in order to buy into the currency. You can buy any fraction that you can afford. This is a common misconception amongst those who haven't bought into the currency yet. Uniformity A good currency will be uniform in its valuation. For instance, a cow can come in many shapes and sizes and therefore can have different values. It's not very uniform. Paper money is very uniform. $20 is always $20. It may not have the same value over time due to inflation, but at any given moment, the value will be equivalent. Bitcoin is the same as paper money in this way. One Bitcoin will always be worth one Bitcoin, except unlike paper money, it is deflationary, meaning the value of Bitcoin will generally tend to rise over the long term instead of decrease. Limited Supply Mars birthday's coming up. But order now, supply is limited. <gasps> limited! Do you have any of those microphones left? Yeah, a couple. A good currency will retain its value by having a limited supply. I alluded to this in the previous category of uniformity. Precious metals are great in this category due to the fact that there is a limited supply of the metals on Earth. Paper money is pretty terrible in this regard. In 2020 alone, the US supply of money has grown by more than 20% due to the US government pushing stimulus to the economy in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Because there is no limited supply of fiat currency, the valuation of the currency will trend downward. Bitcoin, however, has a limited supply by design. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in circulation, which are unlocked as the blocks are added to the blockchain as a form of reward for the miners. Due to this, Bitcoin is deflationary, meaning it will rise over the long term. And we've seen this with the historic prices of Bitcoin. Acceptability Acceptability describes whether or not someone would accept the currency as payment. Paper money excels in this regard. Because it is backed by the government, it is seen as generally acceptable for most people. Precious metals are less so accepted because it is harder to determine their value without special equipment. Bitcoin is growing in acceptability, and it is an active effort in the community. A big barrier to acceptability in the cryptocurrency space is reliable payment mechanisms. Okay, so this Bitcoin ATM is located, as I said, in Sunridge Mall in Calgary. And regulations by the governments in which people spend their money. Bitcoin is growing into a mature currency. Its recent rise to an all-time high valuation means the community is active and growing. As seen through our analysis, Bitcoin performs in many of the characteristics that make a good currency. And for the characteristics it's deficient in, the community is actively working to fix the issues. If I'm being honest, I'm bullish on Bitcoin, but don't let me tell you what to do. If you're interested in cryptocurrency, make sure to do your research and only invest what you're willing to lose. But if you choose to take the plunge into the world of cryptocurrency, welcome to the future, my friend. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We make video essays like this every week. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and help us get to 100 subscribers by sharing it with your friends.